I'm back from the dead. If you have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I have been gone for over eight days or nine days from YouTube. Whatever, eight days, nine days, ten days, all the same now. <laughs> More than a week. The reason is Thanksgiving. I was home with my family, and let me be honest with you, I brought all my recording stuff, I brought my portable mic to do YouTube videos, brought my iPad, all this kind of stuff for the YouTube videos, and I didn't do a single one. I was so unproductive at home, I was like, ah, I'll just relax, I'll do it later. Later, never, well, later happened, nine days later, or whenever this video is going out. So, I mean, better late than never. <laughs> okay, in this video, we're gonna go over stroke volume in the heart. Stroke volume is the volume of blood ejected from the left ventricle with each heartbeat. Oh, also, if you have not watched this cardiac output video, please watch this before this video. This kind of builds on the last video. So, I highly suggest you do that. If you're just an absolute god and no physiology and you know all that stuff, great, you're in the right place for this video. So continue watching. So stroke volume can be calculated from this equation. SV equals EDV minus ESV. What the hell does this mean? Let's break it down. First, let me talk about what systolic is and diastolic, or, or systole or uh, distole. Systole is a fancy word of saying after the contraction has happened. So after the cardiac muscle, your ventricles, or even atria, but you, I usually after the ventricles, they've contracted, we call that systole. During relaxation or during filling up of the compartments or the chambers of the atrial ventricles, we call that distole. You may have heard this in blood pressure. If you've, the normal blood pressure is 120 over 80, this is the systolic value and this is the distolic value. Uh, don't worry about it. Uh, we'll go over in a later video. But I just want to get the nomenclature out there. That's what it means. It's systolic and, uh, or distally or syst uh, and systole. So let's do this. And diastolic volume or EDV, aka preload, that's another fancy word for it, is the amount of blood in the heart after filling or distally. So after the heart, or rather after the left ventricle is done filling up, that is our end diastolic volume. How much blood is in the ventricles after filling up? I must say, these values that we're calculating are normally from the left ventricle. Usually almost all heart measurements come from the left ventricle. However, the right, the right ventricle is nearly mirrored to the left ventricle. They're very slightly off, but for numbers sake, they're quite similar. But for accuracy, we just say left ventricle. That's what we're calculating from. The end systolic volume, or ESV, is the amount of blood in the heart after ejection, or systole. So after we're done contracting the ventricles, how much blood is remaining in that compartment, in the left ventricle? Please do not be mistaken. When the left ventricle contracts, not all the blood is actually able to leave the, comp the compartment or the chamber. It's physically not possible. You may have heard this in you know, anatomy class or whatever, and you're probably given the vision or kind of told, oh yeah, when, the, when they contract, you're probably assuming that when they're contracting, oh yeah, all the blood leaves the compartment and goes to the next or goes wherever it needs to go. That's not true. 
there is always leftover blood. It's physically not possible to squeeze all that blood out into the next chamber or you know, out to the entire body or the lungs or where we're trying to go. There's always some leftover. And that is the end systolic volume. So what about this equation on the bottom? Well, let's actually refer back to this last video I made on the cardiac output. I highly suggest you watch this video beforehand. But the equation goes as follows. Cardiac output equals heart rate times stroke volume. Well, if this is stroke volume, all I did is replace stroke volume with this down here. So it becomes cardiac output equals, you do the parentheses, parentheses first, n diastolic volume minus n systolic volume times heart rate. And that will give you cardiac output. In the next video, we're going to go over how to manipulate these numbers. How do we actually get a high cardiac output value? How do we get a lower heart rate? Higher end diastolic volume. Your body has a many methods to actually manipulate these numbers. A low cardiac output is actually quite bad, can be bad. So we need to buff these numbers up somehow. So your body has ways of doing that. So that will be for the next video. But just for this video, just know this equation and how it fits into this equation. So on exams, you're usually given these values. They're probably given what is the heart rate? What is the end diastolic volume? What is the end systolic volume? And calculate cardiac output. Or you may have to say, A, what is the end diastolic volume when you're given the cardiac output, heart rate, and end systolic volume? End systolic volume. They won't try to make the numbers too complicated. You should be able to do this without, without a calculator. So you do have to memorize this equation and this equation. But if you do so, you should be able to calculate these numbers without a calculator. They're not, this is not a math class, unless you're in some math physiology class that I don't know that exists. But in a normal physiology class, you're going to give easy numbers. So if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. I also apologize for taking that 8, 9, 10, 11 day break. How long? How, it's all the same. <laughs> I apologize. I am back. So videos are back regularly. Yay. And then we're going to get A's together. Let's do this. Oh yeah. And like and subscribe. Thanks. <laughs>